Hey, what's going on guys? Long time no see. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing another character guide. This time it's going to be on Zeta. If you guys are interested in the characters that I've done in the past, I'll make a playlist and I'll link it in the description down below so you guys can check out all the other characters that I've done guides for. I must apologize for the timing of this video. I definitely promised you guys this video a long time ago, but it's finally here and I'm very excited to be sharing some information about Zeta with you guys. She's a super fun character and the character that I consider to be my very first main before Narmaya just because Zeta was here and Narmaya was not during the game's release. I'll be going over everything with this character, beginner things, intermediate things I'll be going over buttons tools strategies all the sorts and just like last time I'll be using the numpad notation system so if you guys don't know what that is I'll be linking more information about it in the description down below before we get started with all that let's go ahead and get into the colors and the weapon skins for the character first I'll be showing off her color skins there's quite a few of them and she has some really good ones too my preferred one is color 12 Next up is her weapon skins. She's got seven of them, just like everybody else. All right, without further ado, let's get right into the guide for Zeta. To give a brief synopsis of Zeta, she is a part of the Society, which is an organization that recruits warriors that have weapons that specialize in taking down primal beasts, and they use these weapons to hunt them down. She roams the skies with her companions such as Vasaraga and Beatrix, improving her spear skills and of course looking out for her friends. She utilizes the Spear of Arvitz, which if you chant its name, it starts to emanate a very hot glow that can have the power to take down the biggest and baddest of primal beasts. Needless to say, she's a tough cookie that knows her way around a fight. She specializes in her spear, and she's kind of a badass. In Granblue Fantasy Versus, she's a character that requires an active playstyle. She uses her pokes, lunges, and projectiles to start offense and control the mid-screen to push them right to the corner. When in the corner, she can oppress the opponents with her pogo stick mix-ups and can mediate what the opponent can do. She has a very obscure way of opening up the opponent. She uses her mobile special moves to keep the pressure safe and to fake the opponent out. With that being said, she can establish mind games that not a lot of characters can and can oppress the opponent in a way that they're not used to. While she does have great tools to initiate neutral and pressure the opponent, it's how you utilize these tools that determine how effective Zeta can be in a match. Now, with that being said, let's go over her movesets. So first we're going to be taking a look at her normals and the first one's going to be far 5L. Far 5L is 6 frames of startup. It goes relatively far. You can crouch this button so don't utilize this too much especially when the opponent is crouching a lot because it can whiff on crouchers just like so. And with that being said it's really good for punishing specific things that aren't supposed to be punished and it can be comboed into EX lunge and into regular scart. So that is really good for punishing in particular. The next button is going to be Far 5M, and Far 5M is her longest reaching button, but at the same time it's one of her slowest buttons, and also one of the most unsafe buttons that she has on block. It's minus 9 on block, it has 10 frame startup, but it does reach a pretty good distance, so it can be good for poking the opponent out, as long as you cancel it into something that's a little bit safer, such as like projectile or something like that. The next one's going to be Far 5H, and Far 5H is a 9 frame startup, so it is faster than Far 5M, but it doesn't go as far. However, it has a lot of active frames, so it's good for whiff punishing, and it's good for keeping the opponent out of your personal bubble. And it's really good for punishing as well at specific distances. So Far 5H is your go-to move to whiff punish, and also to control space as well because it's relatively faster than far 5m and it's a lot safer too next let's take a look at her crouching normal so she's got 2l and 2l is really good because it's got some really good reach it's a low hitting move so you can keep the opponent grounded and keep them blocking low of course it's also plus two on block so it's really good for pressure and it can be comboed into close 5m which results into better scaling in your combos you can also combo 2l into far 5l so you can confirm into a combo it's really effective to be able to utilize in pressure and confirming as well. The next one is going to be 2M, and 2M is probably her best poking tool, mostly because it has a 9 frame startup, and it's relatively safe compared to the other buttons that she has that are far reaching, and it can be special cancelled of course, but the main reason why is because you can utilize it as a poking tool as well as a keep out tool because if they try to roll in, this 2M will stop them. So it's really good in that regard. So 2M is a very good tool for you to use in the neutral, 
and also to punish or to just pressure with uh, special cancels into lunge or some so on and so forth. The next is going to be 2H, and 2H is her main anti-air, so you can use this move to keep the opponent out of the skies, of course, when they jump in on you. It's really good because it can be special cancelled into sp other special moves, and also it has a lot of verticality, but not a lot of horizontal range. So it's really good for when they jump on top of you, but not too much when they're jumping from a distance, because it doesn't have a lot of horizontal range. Either way, it's a really good button to be able to cancel into special moves. She's got a lot of different options out of the 2H. Next, let's take a look at her close proximity normals. We have close 5L, and close 5L is really good for pressure because it is plus 3 on block. It can also be utilized to confirm into different combos, and you can also confirm it into a far 5L, just like that, if you ever want to get real nice with your pressure. If you utilize this well, it can be really, really oppressive. Next up is going to be her close 5M, and her close 5M has a 6 frame startup, so it's really good for punishing. However, it's not that great for block pressure because it is minus 4 on block. I hope they change this in the future. However, it is pretty good because you can confirm it from 2L as well, just like that. But it has a really, really fast startup, so you can punish with this move quite a bit. Next up is going to be close 5H, and close 5H is a pretty average close 5H. It does a pretty chunky hit of damage. It also can be really good for frame trapping. So if you utilize your 2L and then your 5H to make sure that they're not mashing, and it can really hurt if they do end up being caught mashing. But uh, other than that, it's a pretty average close 5H. Nothing too special, no plus frames. It is 9 frames startup, and it's minus, I think, 8 on block. However, it is a pretty decent tool to be able to get a pretty good chunky bit of damage. So whenever you punish, if you can punish with close 5H, you definitely should. Next up, we're going to be going over her unique actions, and she has a multi-stab attack as her unique action. That's really good. It is safe on block and can also create with punish opportunities as well. So if I pressure the opponent, it can keep myself safe just like that. It has a lot of pushback, and it's also just safe in general. But like I said, it can create with punishing opportunities if they ever try to retaliate. So it's really good in that regard. So 5U, very, very strong. The next one's going to be 2U, and this is her sweep. I'm sorry, hold on a minute, the wrong one. There you go, that's her sweep. It's a two-part sweep that both hits hit low. It's seven frames startup, and it's also minus seven, so it's relatively hard to punish. It can be utilized to catch the opponent standing and get them into a knockdown state, which is where she excels. A knockdown state is one of Zeta's greatest strengths, of course, and it's just really good as a sweep in general. All right, next up, we're going to be going over her jumping normals, and she has JL, and JL has a lingering hitbox just like any other JL, but it's really, really good just because it has a very good hitbox going at a 45 degree angle, so whenever you land, it can be very, very strong. It can catch the opponents, and you can also utilize this to fuzzy as well, so that can be really good. Next up, she has JM, and JM is her cross-up button. It's really, really strong to be able to determine which side you're going to land on, especially during pogo stick mix-ups, and I'll tell you guys about that in just a moment. Either or, it's a really good cross-up button in general. Next, we have the JH, and this button is really good for jump-ins. This is your main jump-in button because it has a lot of horizontal range while also having a really good downward hitbox. So utilize that more than anything else if you want to jump in on the opponent. It's also really good for boxing the opponent out in the corner, so you can utilize that to control where they go. Last but not least is going to be her JU, which is her pogo stick, and her pogo stick is one of the most important things about Zeta. She can utilize this up to three times, and she can pressure with it by adding another button in her arsenal at the very end. So she can cancel this at any time, of course. She can also fall down. She can just not do anything and pressure downward. So this allows for some very unique pressure and some very unique oppression. So this is what I meant by she has a very weird, obscure way of opening the opponent up. Now you can, of course, utilize it as a high-low, or you can utilize this as a left-right, just like that. So it can be utilized in very unique ways, but you can easily anti-air it or DP it. And like I said, how you utilize these tools is how effective she can be in a match. So if you utilize it willy-nilly, you will die. Now that we went over her normals, let's go over her special moves. The first one we're going to be going over is her laser beam, aka her projectile. It can go through other projectiles, so it's really good in that regard. She wins most of her fireball wars. It goes full screen, so that's a, also a major plus. But you can't easily spot dodge this and, and uh, uh, dodge roll it. However, she has the medium version, which can also nullify projectiles while also having the ability to knock down on counter hits, which is very important because you can actually hold down the projectile and 
utilize that to bait out dodge rolls, bait out projectiles, bait out jumps, and bait out spot dodges. So whenever you hit them at the end of the recovery of the, the retaliation, they can actually get knocked down and you can utilize that to effectively close the gap. So you can definitely utilize this to zone the opponent out and also to initiate neutral by holding the, the button down and to nullify projectiles. However, she does have an EX version that can be utilized mostly in combos. It can wall bounce and can get some pretty good damage. So, and I don't suggest you use this EX move in any other way other than in combos because it really does not help out too much. Now, the only downside to this projectile is the fact that it's a single hitting projectile, so characters like Vasaraga can power up and they can just armor right through it. Also, EX projectiles can beat this laser projectile. It won't nullify the entire thing, just single hitting projectiles. The next special move I'd like to go over is her lunge. She has a grounded version and she has an aerial version. Now, the light grounded version, when spaced out correctly, can be safe on block. And her medium version, while it does travel a bigger distance, has a little bit more startup and a little bit more recovery. And the EX version actually shares attributes with both of the strengths, so it's fast and it can go up great distance. Now the light version and the medium version do have one follow-up. It can be followed up with another lunge and it can go in whatever direction that you'd like. At a uh, going up, going at a diagonal, or whatever the case may be. This also applies to the aerial version, so you can follow it up at least once. Now speaking of the aerial version, you can actually utilize the light version to go at a diagonal and the medium version to go straight down. Now the EX versions can actually be followed up twice. So it has three strikes instead of two. This also applies to the aerial version as well. Now depending on how she utilizes these special moves is what determines how good she does in a match. For example, the air version can be utilized to bait out anti-airs or bait out specific moves that you want them to do while you're in the air. Also, the grounded version can be utilized to frame trap or to retreat and keep yourself safe in the neutral. So if you do something like this, you can retreat and make yourself safe. But if you think the opponent is going to actually retaliate and try to catch your retreat, then of course you can go forward. And of course, there's the last option, which is just you doing nothing. You can just do this and just wait to see what happens, of course. That is also a very viable strategy when utilizing the lunges. The next special move is going to be another lunge, but it's a grounded aerial lunge that looks like a reversal, but it really isn't. So don't utilize it as a reversal, but it can be really good for anti-airs and for combo conversions as well. Like the other lunges, it can also be followed up multiple times, especially with the EX version, but the normal versions only once. Last but not least, we're going to go over her Rhapsody, and this is the final special move that she has, and it's probably her most important because it unlocks other special moves that are really, really strong and can be utilized in the neutral. And not just that, her stance in general is really useful as well because it has an armor property. Now, if you do the light stance, then it guards mids. If you do the medium stance, it guards lows. And the EX or the heavy stance blocks everything, lows and mids. Now, whenever you go into the stance, when you press a button, it does a follow-up. The light follow-up is going to be a horizontal slash that's really, really good in the neutral. So whenever you want to try and catch stray hits, you can always utilize this. It goes a pretty good di uh, distance. It has got some pretty good range. And the EX version can actually wall bounce, if I can actually get it, just like that. So that's the light follow-up. The medium follow-up is going to be an uppercut type move, which is really good for catching people out of the air. And if you combine this with your 2H, it can be really, really good damage. But either way, another follow-up that you can do. And the last follow-up is going to be a lunge that she does. She takes off into the air and she can actually follow up afterward as well so you can do some cross-ups and you can do whatever else you need to do as well. So practice up, my friends, and utilize these special moves effectively so they can get you some Ws. Now let's go over her supers, her Skart and her Skybound art. The first one's going to be this one. That is a regular Skart and it's really good because you get a safe jump off of it and it wastes no time whatsoever so that's highly appreciated. The next one is going to be Super Skart and enjoy the ride. Now we went over her special moves and her normals, let's go over some tips that I can give you aspiring Zeta players so you can have a better time with the character. 
The first tip that I can give you is to practice up on the motions. Her execution is a little bit more wonky compared to other characters because she doesn't have traditional motions. She has a forward forward motion and a down down motion, which can be easy for some players, but not as easy for others. So uh, it's a really good idea to be able to practice up going into training room or just playing the character as much as you can, getting used to and get building up muscle memory for the character so whenever you confirm specific stray hits or whenever you combo you can get those motions down like that the second tip that i'd give you is of course to utilize her 2l into 5m because that actually scales a lot less and you can overall do more damage in your combos if you utilize your 5l you're going to scale a whole lot more so you're going to overall you're going to be doing less damage in your combo so that's always a thing that you can practice up with as well 2l into 5m this next one is a very important one because sometimes your lunges and your projectiles get blown up by the opponents they know how to fight against zeta so if that's the case end off your block strings with 5u 5u is an incredibly good button just because it is completely safe and like i said before it creates opportunities to whiff punish them if they try to retaliate so please end off your block strings with 5u that's the general very safe option as a zeta player the next tip I can give you guys is utilizing your 2L for pressure. It's so good. It goes a very good distance. You can confirm off of it with EX Lunge or with even Super, just like that. So there's so many different ways you can utilize 2L. Please utilize that as your main pressure tool. If they start to block too much, that's when you can go up for grabs or go up for universal overheads. Then that's how you get your damage with Zeta. That is one of the ways I should say that you can get your damage with Zeta. So practice that. The last tip that I can give you guys is to practice your safe jumps, especially with Zeta. Now, I know a lot of characters have safe jumps and have ways around reversals. However, Zeta in particular is very important because she can actually get mix-up off of her safe jumps. With that being the case, if you don't know what a safe jump is, what it essentially is, if when you knock them down and you do a specific motion, you can actually bait out a reversal, while at the same time, if they don't do a reversal, you can actually knock them on the dome, just like how I did right there. Just do the exact same situation. Exact same thing, as you can see, I blocked the reversal. That's essentially what a safe jump is. There's many, 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 uh, there's so many safe jumps in this game. Zed in particular, like I said, gets a safe jump off of it. I'm sorry, a mix-up off of it. So if I were to do this correctly, I'd turn this off, and then I go ahead and go into a safe jump, but get a mix-up going, essentially, with JU. So that's why it's so important to practice your safe jumps. Look them up as much as possible. The one with the grab is probably the easiest one. The other one that I can probably share with you guys is, of course, the uh, 2U one. So you can actually utilize that to do a JM off of 2U, just like that. But, of course, if they end up uppercutting, then they get blown up, just like that. So that's another safe jump that you can practice as well. Look up as many as you can, practice them in the training room, and utilize them in matches because it does make a difference. Practice those, guys. I briefly went over this a little bit earlier in the video, but to kind of elaborate more on her strategies, let's go over them. The first one's going to be her anti-anti-air moves, so her air lunge, essentially. So, for example, if Gran is anti-airing me just like that, he has the best anti-air in the game, so he's going to blow me up every time. However, if I utilize my air lunges, as you can see, I can bait out specific anti-airs just like that. So it's really strong in that regard. And, of course, you can make yourself safe in case they do block it, because you can actually do a follow-up, and you can keep yourself relatively safe. The second strategy would be to utilize your projectiles to be able to initiate neutral, have them dodge roll, have them spot dodge, have them react to it in a way that you can adapt to it and be able to utilize your 2M if they try to dodge roll through your projectiles or 2H if they try to jump your projectiles, so on and so forth. The same concept as any other character when they throw out a projectile and adapt from there, that's what you do with Zeta. So her projectiles are very, very strong especially with characters that have single hitting projectiles because you win the fireball war essentially so they have to get in on you eventually rhapsody is such a strong move in the neutral that you can blow up specific neutral tools that the opponents can use to get in for example a very common one that grand players use is of course the boots like he's in now that's he doesn't have to really work for it too much however if you utilize rhapsody effectively then you can punish him for trying to get in with the boots so it's a really strong tool to just throw out there sometimes. Of course, you don't want to utilize this all the time because you can get blown up for it. However, it is a good tool to use just to throw it out there and keep the opponent in check. 
The last thing I'd like to do is to briefly touch up on pogo stick mix-ups. So whenever you go into a pogo stick stuff, of course you can have multiple follow-ups and they're going to be expecting you to go into another pogo stick, just like a second one or maybe even a third one. Now whenever you start to condition your opponent from blocking high, that's when you can go low and get a full combo off of it. And once you condition them when you start going low, then that's when you can go high. That's one of the things that you can do with pogo stick mix-ups. Of course, they can reversal and they can anti-air you depending on the anti-air. However, whenever you try to be able to uh, go into pogo stick mix-up off of a safe jump, that's when things become a little bit more interesting. So to kind of show off a safe jump plus a pogo stick mix-up, I like to do this myself. So if you guys want to copy it, you guys definitely can. That's a specific pattern that I use. And then, of course, I bait out the reversal. While at the same time, if he doesn't do it, just to kind of go over it a little once again. Uh-huh. Just like that. I went high that time. I can go low, so on and so forth. So you can find yourself some safe jumps plus mix-ups so you can add a layer on top of your pressure so you can open up the opponents. That is one of the things that I wanted to touch up on with Pogo Step Mix-Up that it's good, but it can be blown up easily with anti-airs and reversals. They'll utilize it willy-nilly, but pogo stick pressure can be very strong and can be hard to deal with when utilizing it effectively. And that's pretty much it. That's all I have to share about Zeta. Hopefully you guys found this informative. Hopefully you guys have something new to take from this and be able to add it to your repertoire so you can get some W's in your belt as a Zeta player. Anyways, guys, let me know what you guys think of the guide. Let me know what you guys think of Zeta. If you guys are thinking of picking her up or if you're thinking of utilizing her more than any other character, let me know. Like the video if you guys did because it does help out quite a bit. Subscribe to the channel for more guides. The next character I'm going to be doing a guide on is going to be Medera. Medera is the next character, so keep an eye out. I'll be doing this hopefully next week, but no promises, of course. I have to really dive into the character to tell you guys everything about them. Anyways, take care, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day, evening, night. I'll see you guys next time.